You know, I had my four sisters and, and, and the grandkids, me and my wife, not all of who else was there, but we all went out there for a cookout. Brother Gary fixed these hamburgers. I mean, they, these hamburgers, you know. One of them two ham, hamburgers, you know, and you had to have somebody else's hand to help you hold it, you know. Uh, Sister Carolyn made a cake that, boy, if it had dropped on your head, your tongue would smack your brains out to get to that cake, you know. And we, we had a good time. And I'll tell you this because some things, sometimes things happen that we cannot control that can bring us down. Now, every time that you can ask me why, every time that we get together now, that comes up. Not the fact that uh, her car broke down, but what comes up is the fact that what a good time we had out there eating those hammers and, and enjoying ourselves there uh, in the company uh, of Brother Gary and Sister Carolyn, you know, that day. That's what comes up, and it always brings a smile uh, on some of the things that, that we talk about and some of the things that happen. You know, that's what we need to do. You know, when we look back and, and, and see all the things that we're going through or that we went through, we should be able to see something to make us smile. God should have taught us something through that. What, what have you found? When you look back, we see this pandemic going on. What have you found that will make you smile? You know, better yet, what makes God smile? That's what we want to look at. That's the title of this morning is just better yet. Better yet, what makes him smile? You know, we think about ourselves all the time, how we feel, and are we going to smile? What, what's going on there? Now? What makes God smile? And that's what we want to look at just for a couple of minutes in, in, in this verse. We're going to read it a few times, and we're going to stop in certain spots and see, hey, maybe that is what God's makes God smile. And are we, are we helping it alone? Are we helping God smile? Are we, you might say, are we turning his smile upside down in the frown of some of the things uh, that we do? Look at 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Or 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. It says, if my, I think the first thing that makes God smile is his people. He has saved born again people, those who have trusted him, those who have come to him and trusted him to say his people make him smile. You know, just like your family make you smile a lot of times. His people make him smile too. Uh, I was getting worried there a little bit. I've never seen Adam come this far up there. Like, uh oh. <laughs> Am I done already? Time up. No. But what what makes God smile is his people being saved. Are you saved this morning? Do you know him as your Savior? Do you know, have you trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? You need to. You need to do that this morning. You need to get that out of the way. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You need to get it. James 4.14 4 tells us, Whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Life is short. It is short, folks. You know, when you're your kid, you think, oh, it just goes on and on. And the older you get, you find out it's going fast. It's going fast, you know. We better be ready to, to, uh, to go out of this world. You see people out there today in this world, they're calling good, bad, and, and bad, good. You know, the time is coming. It is coming. You say, well, how do you know? When do you know? What time are you trying to make up a, a date for it? No, I'm not. But I can tell you this, without a shadow of a doubt, it's closer to today than it was yesterday. Amen. You're closer to going into eternity today than you was yesterday. You know, we, need, we need to be ready. And it makes God smile when we come to Him and accept Him as a Savior. Have you made God smile in that area this morning? That's one area you need in your life, no matter what. Look around you what's going on. Look at all the people who have died during this pandemic, you know. You say, well, it didn't affect me. But it could. Something else could, you know. God has got it in control. He can take you out in, in one second. It don't have to be a, a, a pandemic. It don't have to be something like that. It can be whatever God wants. And we need to be ready to go. And then when you go, is he going to be smiling and say, welcome home? Or is he going to be turning you away? We want God to smile. And that's one way. He smiles on his people, those who have trusted him. Secondly, look at uh, verse 14 again. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble 
themselves. Sad thing that makes God smile is humble people. Humble people. We need to be humble. You know? And I know we're only human. And I'm, I, I, I know and talk about myself. Sometimes I'm not as humble as I should be. I'm not as humble as I should be. And if you think about it, and, and, and if you answered yourself right, you would probably say the same thing. I'm not as humble as I should be. You know? Sometimes, you know, uh, God, God smiles when we're, when we're humble. Yes, He does. But sometimes we don't come to Him in a humble way. Sometimes we come to Him as Peter, thinking others are slacking off. You don't go do that a lot. Boy, they're not good enough, you know. You know, Peter said there in John 21, 21, Peter seeing him said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Ain't that us? Hey, they're not doing enough. They're slacking off. I look at work around at work and see people work. I think, well, they, they just, they just doing nothing. We got one that comes in and she's late every day. But where she gets a good job. I don't understand it, you know, but. But you know, we say, hey, they're slacking off. And that's the same way that Christians do. They look around, we look around, and say, oh, they are, they're not doing too much. You know? We don't know what God has for them to do. Maybe they are a prayer warrior and they're doing more uh, than me up here preaching. You know? yeah. I mean, we we got to look at it. But sometimes we don't come humbly and we want God still to smile upon us. You know? Well, we also sometimes become thinking we have done more. You know, in Luke 12, 16, verse 8, uh, Chapter 12, verse 16 through 18 says, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room, or to restore my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I restore all my fruits and my goods. He thought he had done something. You know, I have done it all. I, I'm up here. I made this, you know. Uh, I, I planted, I told you uh, uh, a couple of years ago we planted cucumbers and they were coming up and I was showing everybody uh, what, I, what I'd done, you know. We planted cabbage this year and, and it started coming up and I thought, oh, look at that, Terry, our cabbage, we're going to plant cabbage, we're going to have plenty of cabbage, you know, we're just, they're just going to do wonders. We go out the next day and they got holes all you do. I said, hey, get on the phone, call Carol and find out what these holes in there, we got to do something about these cabbages, you know. Uh, the same way this man, look at me. But that's the same way with church people, the same way with Christians. We get it in our heads sometimes that we have done more than somebody else. We have done more than what somebody else has done. And, finally, and, we, and we go to God and we don't go humbly. We go and let him know. Hey, you know, I, I did more than, uh, I did more than Scott did today. I'm just using Scott as a, you know, I don't even know what Scott did today. But, but, you know, we do that. That doesn't make God smile. We want to make God smile. We go humbly. We sometimes come thinking, we can't do it. We can't do it. In Exodus 3.11 it says, And Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Who am I? I can't do that. We go to God that way. We go to God. I know we need to be humble, but we go to God with the fact that, hey, God, I can't do it. You asked me to do it, but I, I can't do it. No, well, no way. I don't see, you know. But you know what? God knows what you can do and what you can't do. He knows who he has called. You know, Moses was the one he wanted to use, and he used Moses. You may be the one he wants to use in some way, but you're holding back saying, I can't. We need to humble ourselves, put that smile upon God's face, and say, God, whatever it is, use me. Whatever you want, I am here. Be humble. We should come humbly with, if we want to put a smile upon God's face. And we should move that. You know what? If you don't come humble, God can humble you. God can whoop you. You know, look at Saul, who was later Paul. Going on. Uh, he was destroying the Christians and he was killing them. And we know what God did. He brought him to his knees, blinded him to there, humbled Paul, brought Paul to save Paul. Uh, you know, and did great things uh, for, the, for, the, for God after that. You know, you know God can humble him, but he don't want to. He wants us to come to him humbly. And he wants to smile on us that way. Do we do that uh, this morning? Do we do that this morning? Look at uh, verse 14 again. 
said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways. The next one we will look at is pray. God smiles when we pray. Oh, God smiles when we pray. So God wants us to talk to him. God wants us to talk to him. I know uh, we, we, the second we passed, we hadn't been, uh, uh, the deacons and the public committee hadn't been meeting. And, and a couple of times we, we, we met, we got here, and we just enjoyed talking to each other. We got a little bit of comfort, maybe not a lot, but it was just enjoying talking to each other. Well, God wants you to want you to do that. He wants you to talk to him, you know. Uh, you know, I have a sister that lives in Cincinnati. Now we I, I call her and she called me and, and and we do it about once a month, once every two months, maybe every three months, you know. And, and the process goes like, you know, how are you? I, I, I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm fine. How's your family? Okay, how's your family? Okay, okay, we'll talk to you later. And that, that's our conversation, you know, and we're, and we're done, you know. And we go, well, all right, she moved back to Cincinnati. And they was they were retired. They were living in Florida and Cincinnati. They sold her house in Florida and moved back to Cincinnati. And uh, uh, my other sister was telling me, yeah, they didn't stop by because uh, they wanted to get on back and with all this going on. And, they're supposed to be quarantined in uh, Cincinnati for two weeks or whatever. I, I don't remember. And, and so I told her, well, I'm going to give her a call. So I called her. And she said, hello. And sometimes my phone, on my, my cell phone sometimes, my number comes up, my name comes up, sometimes it don't. And, and evidently it hadn't come up. And, and it just, she said, hello. And I said, hello. I said, this is the quarantine police. <laughs> and uh, she hung up on me. <laughs> it was like two or three days later before I could get her on the phone. And she said, yeah. She said, I hadn't done nothing. I didn't know what the police was calling me, so I asked. I said, well, don't, wouldn't you think the police think it was strange that you hung up But, you know, anyway, she, she, she wouldn't recognize the voice. What if God was like that when you called him? You didn't call him enough, and you called him, and, and you needed something, or you wanted help with something, or you just wanted to talk to him, and he just hung up. So I don't know them. Huh? Who was that? They ain't called me in my years, you know. I, you know, I know God would do, but just think about what, you know, uh, if He was like that, you know, because we don't talk to Him. We need to smile. He wants us to talk to Him, uh, not even when we're, you know, when things are going wrong, but when things are not going wrong. He wants us to talk to Him daily, you know. First Thessalonians five seventeen tells us, "Pray without ceasing." Amen. That means pray all the time. You want God's to talk to Him all the time. Uh, that means pray, pray in the good times and the bad times, you know. Uh, pray in the days of the pandemic. Pray in the days after the pandemic, you know. We need to do that. The days when we have uh, to, to wear the masks, and then the days when it's all back to normal, we need to keep praying. See, sometimes people will pray like today. Oh, we got to wear this mask. These things are going on in, in the world. And then as soon as it's calmed down, things get back to normal, Everybody gets back in the regular seats that they, they've chosen, you know. As Adam said, everybody's sitting at where they want to sit. Then we just forget about praying. We'll just do that at church. You know, uh, so so and so prayed at church. That, that's that's good. That'll, that'll last this week. Maybe a little longer, you know. But we need to keep praying. God wants to talk to us, you know. Uh, he wants to talk to us even when things are going good. You know the story of Jonah? Uh, God asked Jonah uh, to go to Nineveh, you know, he asked him to go. And Jonah was close enough that God spoke to him, you know. But what did God, did Jonah speak back to God? No, Jonah just took up on himself, I'm going to go the other way. You know, I, I'm going to run. You know? I'm not going to pray, I'm not talking it over with God. Sometimes we're like that. You know, I'm not talking things over with God. And you know what happened to Jonah? He got swallowed by a big fish. Boy, when Jonah was in that fish, he decided it was time to pray. Let me talk to God now. I'm, I'm in trouble. Let me, and we're like this. I'm, I'm in trouble. Let me talk to God. You know, if we would pray before the trouble comes, a lot of times the trouble would come. You know, I'm not saying all the times you, you, you're not going to have some trouble, but a lot of times if we pray about it before it happens, a lot of times it don't come. You know, and if we pray about something, that puts a smile on God's face. You know, he's smiling on us. You know, I know... Uh, just reading from a couple weeks ago or so, 
we went down and seen the grandkids, but we hadn't seen them in a while. And my, my, old, my oldest uh, granddaughter, she's, well, she's going to be turning 13 this year. And she just started to uh, cook a little bit. She's trying, I mean, she's not fixing anything, you know. She, she fixes meatballs and tacos and, and stuff. But she got to where she, you know, she had missing, and especially Nana. She misses Nana. So she would call up, and we would have a dinner date. They had figured out what they was going on. One day we had tacos, and she fixed tacos, and we fixed tacos, and you was having on that um, FaceTime, I think it is. FaceTime where you where you can see each other, and we'd sit at the table, and, and then we'd watch them eat, and they'd watch us eat, you know, just because she was missing. Just because she wanted to talk to them, you know, and, and, and things like that. Well, you know what? God's the same way. He wants to talk to us daily. We don't have to come with him. A lot of times we don't go to God if we don't have a problem. We say, well, God, I don't have a problem today. Things going all right. Now, maybe I shouldn't, shouldn't talk to him. No, you need to talk to him. He wants to, just, just like somebody, she wanted to talk to us. God wants to talk to you. And it makes a smile. And then we put a big smile on, Zoe, on Zoe's face when we watched her eating. And we would say something good about her uh, meatballs and, and, and all that. And how uh, bigger her meatball was than, than Nana's and, and, and different things. Brought a smile to her face. Things like that bring a smile to God's face, you know. Talk to, talk to God. You know, that's what we're going to do. We, we need to talk. One day you're going to stand uh, face to face with him. Face to face. And hopefully he'll be smiling. And you'll be smiling. We need to do that. We need, we need to pray every day. Every day. Keep a prayer in your heart. Pray every day, you know. Now well, let's look at another. It says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Next thing that makes him smile, leaving this verse, is turning from your wicked ways and seek his face. Seek God. You want to make God smile? Seek after him. Seek what he wants. So much of uh, uh, people today, they want to seek out what they want. What they want, you know. I can only talk to you from experience. I a lot of times want to seek out what Wayne Patrick wants. This is what I want, you know. You know, but we need to seek out what God wants. We need to walk after His way. We need to seek after His will. His will. A lot of people say, "No, oh, I want to do that. That looks like a good job in the church. That looks like a good job, you know." Maybe cleaning the church looked like a good job. But now they got a lot of extra cleaning to do. You might be saying, well, that don't look like a good job now because they got to do too much more, you know. You know, but what we need to do is seek out God's will for what his job is for us. And that will make him smile. You know, in Luke 22, 42, it's, Jesus says, saying, Father, if thou will, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thine. Even the Lord Jesus Christ said, whatever your will, Father, that's what I want to do. That's, right. that's what Christians need today. That's what America needs today. That's right. We need to say, whatever your will is, God. We've took uh, God out of uh, uh, America. What do you expect him to do? What do you, I, I told my wife, I still believe his hand at the ball of America, but I believe it's raising up. It's raising them. And if America don't get, get right, it's going to come right off. It's going to come right off. You know, America's, uh, God is not going to let things go on like they're going. You look at Sodom and Gomorrah, he didn't let it go on there. And he's not going to let it. Because a lot of times people think, oh, America, we are hit. We're only hit because God is in with us. Yeah. Other than that, we're not, you know, we need to seek after his will. And, you know, it's his will that matters, not ours. It's his will that matters. When we look around and all this is going on, we need to look inside ourselves and say, hey, am I doing what God wants me to do? Am I doing what God wants me to do? You know, oh, we can complain and tell everybody else what to do. We can tell the news people what to do. And believe me, you can ask my wife. I tell them every day. Yeah, this is the way it's going to be. This, this is how you straighten up this. I'm just telling her on the way to church. You know, this is how we could have all this straightened up. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't went this far. You know, uh, yeah, uh, you know, I can do that. But we need sometimes just stop and look at ourselves and say, hey, God, 
How am I being strengthened? How am I being kindled? Am I seeking your will? Am I doing what you want me to do? You know? Amen. And then say, God, you worry about the rest of it. You take care of it. You make them do what you want to or whatever, you know. I can't. Let me do what you want me to do, you know. If we want him to smile, we need to seek his will. Verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble, them, humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The last thing we'll that makes God, I think it makes God smile is blessing us. God wants to bless his people. God does not want uh, to uh, uh, spank us. Or, you know, God doesn't want to do that, just like you don't want to do with your children sometimes. He wants to bless us. And he wants to bless us when we do what he wants us to do. When we're following after him, when we're listening to what he has to say, he wants he wants to bless us. You know, if we are trying to be uh, our best to make God smile and bring a smile to God's face, we'll be trying to do and live the way He wants us to live today. You know? and that's what we want to do. We looked at some very simple things I think that make God smile. Very yeah. simple, make make God smile along the way. And it isn't that uh, what uh, we want. It isn't what we want. It's what makes God happy. We're too busy trying to make ourselves happy. That's right. To make ourselves happy. It's what God wants that really counts. Yeah. And what makes Him happy that counts. If we can get that through, my wife would say, my thick skull, or sometimes she uses different words, but uh, if, if I can get that to you, I'm going to make it out a lot, lot better. I don't know about you. I'm just talking about myself. You know. Sometimes I can be stubborn. Sometimes I can come not humble. You know. Sometimes I can I, 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 you know, I, I don't, I can try to tell God, this is how you need to do it. You know, I, I, I know. I'm, I'm 63 years old. I know how it's supposed to be done. It's not done. Come on, God, let's, let's get with the program. You know, I mean, that's just me. We shouldn't be that way. God knows what he's doing. We need to come to him humble. We need to want to make him smile. You know. Now as we went back, as we went back to work, we've been back to work for about three weeks now. You know, it's it's getting kind of old now. You know, first day it was all right. We we built 90 cars. So pretty good. You know, all right. They just kept up in the number, up in the number. We got to wear a mask and stuff. Uh, ain't right anymore, you know. But we got back to work, and, and before you come to work, they, you had to put a nap on your phone. You had to answer four questions. Each morning, you, you get up and answer those four questions. And, and you got to actually answer no to all of them, or they, you know. But you answer those four questions, you submit it, and they, they send you a thing, tell you, oh, yeah, you can, you can come to work today. Then you go to work, and you got to uh, go through a tent and show them your answers on the thing, and you got to go here. And then you, uh, you get a mask, and then you go in here, and they, I, I thought they were taking a picture, but I think they, they're checking my temperature, I guess. I don't know why. I, I, I was, I, I, they just want to take my picture every day. You know, but they, they take your temperature, and then you go on. You, you, you do them things to get in, uh, get back to work, you know. And uh, there, let me ask you something. Is your life making God smile? You know, we, we mentioned them questions, but no one asked you some questions here, and you answer it yourself and figure out, is, is God making you smile? Or are you making God smile? Or is there something that maybe we better do that are not making God smile? You know, maybe we better get something right to make God smile. Because you're not, you're a lot happier with God smiling upon you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Are you His? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that you are saved and you're on your way to heaven? Are you his people? Are you his people? You know, it, it doesn't matter uh, if you're man or woman. It doesn't matter if, if you're black or white, purple or green or orange. What matters, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Amen. Are you his? Second question. Are you coming to him humbly? When you go to God, do you go humbly? Is he smiling at you because you're humbly? Are 
are you spending time in prayer? Not just while you're at church. Not just when you need something. But all the time. Are you spending time? Do you go to God and just talk to him as a friend? Or do you need, uh, need to uh, God to help you get that right? You know? Are you seeking his will? Not something that you think you want to do. You know, believe me, this is not what I want to do. This is not what my wife wanted me to do. This is not what we expect to do. Oh, I, I, I would come to church and I'd do any, you know, but the preaching that I don't want to do. You know, you know, some people said that to me, well, hey, that's a good job. They, they get up earned. And they preach three times a week, like the pastor preached three times a week, and that's no, there's a lot more to it uh, than that. But this is what God asks me to do. And we need to do what God asks us to do. Yeah. We need to seek His will. America needs to seek God's will. And we're, folks, I, I know my, my wife calls me a, a, a downer all the time. I, I hate to do that, but America is going in the wrong direction. Yeah. She is going down. She is sinking if we don't throw out the lifeline to, to the Lord and say, hey, help us. Help us. Help us. Let me do your wills. Let me seek after you. If America does not do that, you think the pandemic was something. Hmm. Just wait till you see what's going to come. God's not going to take care. God's going to take care of it. Like I said earlier, when he, when he humbled Paul, he is either, either America will humble themselves back to God or God will humble them. You know, are we seeking his will? Let me ask you this as we get ready to close. Are you happy with your answers? Better yet, would God be happy with your answers? And we're going to have a word of prayer and the altar is going to be open for you to pray if you want to pray here. You know, I'm not going to come down to like Matt did, but if you want to talk to somebody, you let us know and we will talk to you. But whatever God lays on your heart, you need to do. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your house. Lord, again, we ask you to be with us, Lord. We ask you to be with each one of us. We don't know what people need today, Lord, but help us to seek out your will. Help us to be uh, the kind of people that that are seeking out to, to make you smile, Lord, to do what you want us to do. And one here that don't know you, we ask now that you'd help them to come to know you as the first to say. If there's one that needs to get something done, maybe something I never talked about, but something you have laid on your heart, we pray that they will get that done. Bless this morning's uh, invitation, Lord. Use it for your honor and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.